okay, you had your programming interview and you did great, but then you didn't hear back. Why do employers ghost candidates? Okay, you know the deal. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Okay, now this is a sensitive subject, but there's a reason why companies do this. A lot of it has to do with workload. Some of it has to do with process and some of it has to do with legal reasons. First, I have to walk through the hiring process. At most small to medium-sized companies, which is what I have the most experience in, hiring is usually done in three phases. To start, a recruiter or HR person usually calls you and puts you through a half-hour phone screen or Zoom call, just answering basic questions about your resume. If you pass that, then you usually get a technical phone screen or Zoom call from a grizzled old senior developer who doesn't like people. Then you'll usually either have an in-person or today maybe a Zoom panel interview with three people that you're going to be working with. If you're doing well in that interview, you'll usually be interviewed by the engineering manager or maybe even the director of IT, depending on the size of the company. If you've gotten to that phase, you've done pretty well. There might be a fourth or fifth round, but you usually only see that at larger companies. Now, typically a recruiter's day starts at 6 or 7 a.m. They wake up and they check their email and they look at all the resumes that came in overnight. They do that because they need to plan their day out. And normally they plan their day out in 30-minute increments. They don't even schedule time to go to the bathroom. If you've ever been called by a recruiter five minutes late, it's because they had to squeeze in going to the bathroom in between phone calls. And normally these guys don't even get to go to lunch. During lunch, they're talking to a potential recruit who's sitting at his car in his current employer's parking lot, hiding, talking on the phone, trying to get a new job. And if this is a smaller company where the recruiter is also the HR person, it's even worse because the HR person is usually really busy doing their HR job and doing their recruiting job. So a lot of times, especially at smaller companies, recruiters just can't take time out of their day to let you know that you've been rejected. It's not an efficient use of their time. And a second reason is that a lot of recruiters just don't have the technical capacity to understand why you failed a technical part of the interview. A lot of them have degrees in HR or business or communications. That doesn't mean they're stupid. It just means they have a different discipline and they might not understand why you failed a technical portion of the interview, even if it was explained to them. The third reason is legal. A lot of people who ask to hear feedback don't actually want to hear honest feedback, and companies live in fear of getting sued over the repercussions of saying why you aren't hired. So in the end, it's best just not to say anything. So a couple of years back, I was the engineering manager at a company that developed software for law firms, and we were hiring three salesmen that would go out to different law firms and try to get lawyers to buy our software. Now, at the time, I was the only guy there who spoke English as his first language, so it was up to me to interview these salespeople. And one guy came in, and he was wearing a Star Wars tie. Now, if this person were interviewing as a developer, he could have worn a Star Trek tie or a Doctor Who tie or no tie, and they wouldn't have cared. But this is for a sales position where you're going to be talking with lawyers who wear Rolex watches and expensive suits. Ultimately, we didn't move forward with hiring the person. If you're the kind of person who doesn't understand why it's not appropriate to wear a Star Wars tie to a legal sales job interview, nothing I can say will make you understand why that was inappropriate. There's just no positive outcome to that conversation, so it's just best for the employer not to have it. Finally, at some companies, you haven't been ghosted. It just takes a couple of weeks to get you hired. And a lot of small to medium-sized companies, you need approval from three to four people to get someone hired. The engineering manager, the director of IT, the director of HR, and at some companies, the president of the company. If one of those people is sick or out on vacation, you're not going to hear back. Now, at American companies, the time between Thanksgiving and New Year's is the absolute worst time to look for a job because everybody's going on vacation. But the good news is that in January, that's when the budgets start opening up and companies have more flexibility to hire people. My suggestion is to create a spreadsheet with every single company you interview at and the last time they contacted you. And once you hit two weeks from the last time they contacted you, let it go, Elsa. So that's why companies ghost you. It's just business, nothing personal. Good luck on your next interview.